then I've just raised the value of that building from a million dollars to a million and a half dollars. Now, did it cost me $500,000 to do that? Not if I'm good at what I do. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Women Creating Wealth. Today, I want to talk to you about asset classes. So sometimes when you hear an asset class, you think, oh, stocks, bonds, real estate, uh, gold, silver. In fact, within the real estate umbrella, there are also asset classes and they're very simple. The names are very simple, A, B, C, D. Sometimes there's also C plus, D minus, right? Like that. But in basically it's pretty straightforward. And A, as you may imagine, is the best asset class, the most fantastic property in the best location, completely like new, beautiful, amazing, right? And I'm thinking about downtown Boston would might be like the Intercontinental Hotel, residences at the Ritz, you know, things like that, where things are new, they're beautiful, the rents are like ten to $20,000 a month. The people who are living in these apartments are making millions of dollars. A lot of, for example, at the Intercontinental, people keep those units and they only use them when they're in town. One or two weeks a year, the rest of the time they just sit empty. Maybe the cleaner comes, right? Those are the kind of tenants that like anybody would want, right? It's just a drop in the bucket. The accountant pays the rent. They don't even think about it. They're not even using it. That would be a class A. Although in some neighborhoods, right? In some areas, class A might be a much simpler type of apartment, but it's still going to be newer. It's still going to be tenants who have no problem paying the rent, right? So you're looking at what's the location, how, how much potential maintenance are you going to have on that property, right? So that's when we get into things that are newer. Most likely you're not going to have a lot of maintenance to perform. Here are some of the factors that determine what asset class the building is going to be categorized. The age of the building, the location, the income level of the tenants and how likely they are to be able to pay their rent on time, the amenities of the building, the appreciation that it's likely to have, that the building is likely to have, the rental income that a person would make if they owned that building, and in general, the overall condition. So are you going to have maintenance issues? Are you going to be taking some of the profit that you're making on the building and put that into either renovating the unit or dealing with maintenance problems. So as you move down the alphabet, so your A-class building, very, very little risk. And when you invest in an A-class building, you should not expect an exorbitant return. When you invest in an A-class building, you're going to be getting, you know, maybe just 2%, but you figure that your risk is very low. So you're satisfied to get such a low rate. And maybe you're only investing because you want to live there someday. People do that. Sometimes they think, oh, I'm going to buy this today, assuming that the price is going to go up. I don't even care if I just break even because when I retire, I'm going to live there. That happens. And then as you get into like a B-class property, you're still talking about a really reliable income stream, a really nice building, maybe just a little bit older um, you may want to go in and repaint some units as people move out, you know, minimal repairs, minimal maintenance. You're going to still have some amenities. So you're probably not going to have like a rooftop deck and pool area, but you could very likely could have a pool. You could have, you know, you maybe going to have laundry in all the units. You might have more nicer bathrooms and, you know, just in general, nicer landscaping. So now you can see as we move down to a C-class building, the kinds of things that you could do to improve the property, to bring it up to a B-class, which is just going to naturally impact the, the price. Because now, again, a B-class building has a teeny bit of risk. So people would be willing to have, the people want to have a higher return on that. So on a B-class building, maybe you're going to expect at least four or 5%. Then as you move down to a C-class building, you know, you might expect 8% return on your money. So when we talked um, a couple of weeks ago about cap rate, if you're investing in a C-class building, you are going to expect a higher cap rate, right? A higher cash on cash return, which we still haven't talked about, but I will we'll cover that very shortly. So if you invest in a class C building and you go in and you improve the landscaping and you raise the rents and you maybe paint the common areas, you know, maybe you add a fitness center or something like that to 
have more amenities. Maybe you secure a parking lot where it may not have had parking before or something like that. Anything that you can do to raise that C class building up to a B class, you can charge more because people are expecting a lower return. I recently purchased a C class commercial condo. Now, by commercial condo, I mean that it's an actually an office building. We consider a property be, to be a commercial, even if people live there, if it has more than five units. So it can be a little bit confusing, but a, a commercial condo, which in this case means one where commerce actually happens. So it is an office condo. I purchased it. It was definitely a C-class property. It was built in the 80s. It had not been well renovated in the meantime. It had indoor outdoor carpeting. The exterior of the building was very tired. Parking lot was cracked. The landscaping had been let go. The roof was leaking. Not a very nice building, but incredible potential for improvement. So by doing some simple things, not inexpensive, right? We repaved the parking lot. We put a new roof on, but inside the unit, I tore out the old indoor outdoor carpeting and put down vinyl planking. I painted all the rooms. I improved the kitchens and baths and basically that's it. And when I had my property appraised because I wanted to take out a loan and take out some of the cash that I had put into it. So the amount that I paid for it versus the amount that it was worth, the value had more than doubled more than doubled in less than a year, just because of the interior modifications that I had made. That's huge. Another very easy way to increase the value of your property is to increase the rents because you know, you may know, now you know, that for a commercial property, it doesn't matter about comps. There is not a concept of comps. There's a concept of how much is this commercial structure going to yield in revenue. I mean, the fact that it's a commercial structure means that people want to invest in it. If someone invests in it, how much money are they going to make? If you identify that return and improve it, it raises the value of your property instantly. So let's say that I buy, you see this sometimes it says rents are below market. So there's a market rate that people are willing to pay, but the people in this particular building are not paying that because Maybe it's poorly managed. Maybe it has maintenance issues. You, you don't know. You've got to figure that out before you buy it. But let's say that I buy a property. I spend a million dollars and all the units in there are paying a thousand dollars a month for rent. If I go in there and I either get new tenants or work with the tenants to improve the condition of their units or whatever I have to do to now get the tenants to pay $1,500 a month instead of a thousand dollars a month, then I've just raised the value of that building from a million dollars to a million and a half dollars. Now, did it cost me $500,000 to do that? Not if I'm good at what I do. (laughs) You should, when you're making this evaluation, you say, "What what are the market rents in the area? What do I realistically have to do to this unit to get that market rate? Sometimes all you need to do is negotiate with the tenants. A lot of times they know, hey, I've been getting a great deal. I've lived here for ages. You know, the the landlord loved me. You don't love me as much. You want me to pay more. It's still going to be less than it would cost me to move. I'm willing to do it. Sometimes all it is is to sit down at the kitchen table and say, hey, you know, you've been getting a great deal, but I need to pay the rent mortgage. And then that's it. You've just increased the rent by one conversation. So sometimes you can come up with a plan and say, okay, you're at $1,000 market rent is 1500 let's increase it by you know 100 dollars every 2 months until we get you up to a market rate that gives them almost a year to get used to paying them the higher amount there's a lot you can do and that will allow you to take that C property and move it up to potentially to a B property if you improve the landscaping improve the interior exterior and in- increase the rents then you have potential to really add a lot of value to that property. Um, Let's talk really quickly about D-class properties. So D-class property is when you think about it, it's what you think of when you think of a crack house, okay? It's not in a nice neighborhood. If there are tenants, they're not paying market rent. They're not paying very much at all. They might not be paying very often. You know, it might just be a, a a question of having a, a, buying a building in a place where 
it's a kind of a sketchy location with sketchy tenants and just not really very nice. But there are opportunities for class D buildings if you buy them at the right time. And if you have the elbow grease and you're willing to go in there and do the work. So sometimes you can buy a building at a time when some exterior market force is causing that area to increase in value. And it's drawing more people into the area. So for example, perhaps there's a new train line that's going to be extended to now include this town. And that will allow people to live there and work in another city that, um, you know, an easy commute to people to work in another city. And now all of a sudden, people are going to want to live there who couldn't live there before because they didn't have a way, there was nowhere for them to work, right? So th these things happen. And so you buy it knowing that that train line is going to be extended in say the next year. And then you start working on the building, fixing up the building little by little. You're replacing this, fixing up that, painting this, adding a little of this and that and the other thing. And then by time the train line's extended and people are looking around in that area you now have some beautiful apartment buildings to offer them. And you've basically taken between you and the train line, you've taken that D-class property to a C plus or a B, adding tremendous, tremendous value. But that's the big question. What's happening? You know, what happens if they delay the train line for five years and then you've got this property and it's getting vandalized and it's terrible and whatever. It takes research, right? The D-class property is not for the faint of heart. It's not for the new investor. There are a lot of ways to lose your shirt on a D-class property. <clears throat> but let's take Detroit as an example. Detroit, lovely town. A lot of people there lost their jobs when the auto industry changed, relocated, modified itself. Lost A lot of jobs were lost. And people, good nice, hardworking people who wanted to pay their rent couldn't because they just could not get a job. It was like move to another town or just live here in squalor. So, you know, that sucked for everybody. And those buildings, these beautiful single family homes lost all of their value because nobody wanted to live there. And there was no place for the people to work if they did want to live there. And so of course, whenever an opportunity comes in, you know, nature hates a vacuum, all the nice people leave. And the people who come in are the people who want to, you know, squat and vandalize and do graffiti and make a mess of a town. It's unfortunate, but these things happen. And, you know, again, it doesn't take long. So on the other side, now Detroit is starting to bring in some new industry. They're attracting new industry there. They're attracting artists and other people that and that is causing the value of this these homes to increase. Now all of a sudden people are willing to live there. They they can work. They can live there and work. They can move back home from wherever they had to go in order to get employment because jobs are starting to come back to the area. So those people, I mean, how long ago was it? Was it maybe five years ago? You could buy a single family home in Detroit for like five hundred dollars. I shit you not. And now, of course, I mean, at that point, the roofs weren't being repaired. You know, you were going to have to do some work to bring those up to code, bring them up to a living standard. But if you had that initiative and you could do that, then all of a sudden you can create a beautiful property for yourself or for someone else, either to rent or to purchase. And now that the market's starting to circle around, you know, there's a lot of potential there. But that was five years ago. What happened in those five years? Did you just leave it there paying like a tax because it was vacant? You know, I mean, there's just a lot of things to think about. What I want you to think about right now is, are you comfortable buying like a C-class property and maybe in improving it and making it a B-class property or taking a C-minus and turning it into a C-plus, something like that, so that you could see some return on your investment so that you could allow your money to work for you Next week, we're going to talk to uh, Rebecca Moore. Rebecca Moore does syndication. So she is going to show you how instead of buying your own property and turning, taking it from a C to a B, how you can join a syndication that will do that with you or for you or as a partner with you. So tune in next week. In the meantime, think about who you know, who's been thinking about getting involved in, in real estate investing, who might like to 
understand the lingo of various asset classes and forward them this podcast episode. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful day. And thanks for joining. 